it's another match day to look forward to in the NPFL, the Nigeria Premier Football League. And like we do every Thursday, we bring you the match day preview. Of course, looking forward to these weekend fixtures. We're going to match day 13. And of course, look forward to some exciting encounters as far as this weekend is concerned. But of course, we're having nine games as one has been postponed. Talking about the Imba against Sunshine Stars. That game postponed because of the Imba's uh, continental duty. But all our games will be going down. I'll be also be having some on TV available for you to stream. And so we look forward to this game. We look at all these games. As we speak, some of these things are even traveling already. Uh, before we got into this studio, before we got on this podcast, I was speaking with Tikoudu City, his media director, and they're already on their way to me now where they will be facing Niger Tornadoes. But we look, take a look at all of these fixtures and definitely we'll give you all the best of analysis like you always enjoy on the Intercontinental Sport TV NPFL podcast show. Here we get, you get all the information you needed as far as the NPFL is concerned. Don't forget that you can always support us. Let's do this together. Of course, take the NPFL to another great level. I'm not the only one on the show this uh, day. I've got Toby Ajewale also here with me. So we take a run through some of the fixtures, juicy encounters that we're looking forward to this weekend. Toby, how are you doing? Yeah, good afternoon, Raymond. I'll be fine. Well, yes, sir. I'm doing I'll good. be you. Whether it's not affecting. I was going to ask you that. Oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, well. I the mole. Uh, eh? mm. <laughs> but I'm uh, good to have you on the show. Yes, sir. It's always a pleasure uh, to share uh, this space with you. Yes. Uh, the NPFL, uh, uh, well, there was no really international break uh, for the NPFL, no. uh, but yes, uh, it's good uh, that we are seeing uh, the league run, uh, I think, relatively smoothly. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, we've been talking about having our leagues in sync with what we have in Europe. Europe. And I think for the first time, when you're talking about the weeks, uh, the amount of matches split so far, they are almost in sync, if not yeah. in sync as of uh, uh, today right now. And for uh, at the NPFL side, uh, good luck to them. Uh, I think I've been impressed with uh, the level of uh, let's say coordination that we have seen. Not saying there's no room for improvement, but uh, with what we have seen, compared to what we have seen in the past and what we are seeing right now, there's a whole lot of improvement uh, with uh, the league, the competition, uh, the players, how they comport themselves. Well, maybe one or two issues there. We would always people would always complain. Coaches are always complain about officiating, but it's yes, every, it's everywhere anymore. Exactly, but I think uh, the MPFL is living up to his billing so far. Mm. Living up to his billing so far, and to we'll go straight to a, re- a preview of uh, these fixtures. Don't forget you can follow us on all our social media and news, and uh, definitely you enjoy good content from us. First, let me read out all the fixtures. I'll be asking Toby to pick uh, three games in which uh, he's, put, he's, he's going to beam his, his searchlight on for this weekend. The fixtures first, Academy Warriors will be hosting Aqua United, Niger Tornadoes against Ikoju City, Bendel Insurance against uh, Aqua United, like I said, Eimbao is uh, against Sunshine Star being postponed, Lobby Stars against Kano Pillars, Katsina United against Remo Stars, Play two United against Nasara United, the Rivers United against Abia Warriors. We got Atlant against Enugu Rangers, and of course Shooting Stars against Bayelsa United. Toby, three games they're looking forward to out of these fixtures. Yes, uh, three games are uh, looking forward to uh, for me, and yes, uh, one game I will be more or less uh, taking a look at uh, will be uh, the game uh, for uh, the Uluyole Warriors, uh, the Shooting Stars. Uh, right there, remember? Uh, As someone battle. Uh, well. Last time out, uh, they were on the road, uh, not too far away from here. Yeah. Uh, they went to Ikorodu, uh, they came up against Ikorodu City, and uh, they went ahead in that game. Antonio Kachi scoring against his former club, he was even captain oh, the on, on the day. Uh, but uh, should I say the team capitulated as they have always been doing, especially when they are on uh, their away runs. And uh, Agbingo Gubote was not a happy man after that game. Remember, he lashed out. At the match day officials, some people even they even lashed out at journalists uh, <laughs> uh, after uh, that fixture. But uh, uh, talking about their next game uh, coming up uh, uh, on Sunday, uh, they need to bounce back. And yes, I'll be hoping uh, they get all three points uh, in uh, that fixture. Right, the, another fixture I'll be also be uh, taking a look at uh, will be Rivers versus Abia Warriors uh, for uh, Rivers United. I think uh, they came up against. 
a side I would have expected them to win. To win? That was against the Bayern. Now I'm even was. talking about Bayern. I'm talking about Who that game Bayern from Bayern United. One of those games that uh, Ladamboso was giving uh, I think too, much. too much ultimatum. Yeah. I guess he traveled to Yenagua, got that. I traveled from here and go. I went to Port Harcourt, got that victory, victory uh, in uh, Port Harcourt right there. And now they drew against the uh, uh, Remo Stars. Stars. I was not too surprised with that result, but it was end to end stuff uh, in that game. But right now they'll be playing uh, their next game right there in uh, Port Harcourt right there. So backing on them to get all three points uh, uh, right there. It will have been easy. It will have been very interesting to have seen how uh, Imba would have. Uh, uh, set up against uh, Sunshine, uh, Sunshine Stars, but uh, they'll be traveling uh, on the road. They'll be they'll be in Egypt against Al Masri. Right, they're wishing them all the best. Right, then at least that is one trophy they have not won the Cup Confederation Cup. <laughs> uh, but yes, I would have wanted to see how they will have set up there. But uh, Yemi Olari, what do I think so far? Uh, he's steadying the ship. He's learning on the job, as I've been saying so far. Uh, but for me, Aimba, uh I'm still relatively impressed with them so far. Remo Stars are. Uh, Currently on top of the MPFL standings, uh, no uh, Daniel Lugumoda day, no problem for them. Mm. The assistant coach, it will be back. I think he will be back. Yes, he should be back for this he game against be, Casino United. He, yes, he should be back, and I'm sure not too long now you will see him again on, on national team. Do you remember the Chan Eagles? Yeah, the in, Chan, December. in December they'll be having a double header against, against the Ghana. Black Stars of Ghana, and uh, I, I just hope that. They will give us reasons to smile because the last international window for Nigeria was nothing to write to me about. I, if I was part of those in the decision making committee, I would have made sure that those games that we played against the Benin Republic and, and even Rwanda yeah. should have been prosecuted by MPFL players. <laughs> why, why, why did you say that? No. But look at us. Okay. We, we called our foreign based stars, if I can yeah. call them. And out of six possible points. We picked four. We picked, uh, we, we one. picked one. One. Out of six possible points. But, 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 uh, but, but Toby, we are quick to lash out at the foreign stars. I'm, see, see, for those of us that have been watching national team football for a long time, yeah. you know, the, gone are the days that, okay, even if we say Nigeria is coming up against certain things, back then, growing up, the only teams that would give Nigeria problem is okay if you are talking about the countries like Cameroon. If uh, even Ghana was never a problem for us, uh, but right now, uh, our top, our, our first team might even struggle to get, uh, yeah, it, it, even when it comes to the basic of stringing passes. You and then that's the fault of the technical crew, is it the fault of the players? It's not the fault of the players, but sometimes you even tell yourself that maybe these players might not even have some of this passion, they might not be passionate. They might not have that burning passion to mm. do certain things, and but so, uh, so, so you think if MPV player had prosecuted those two games, we we'll get six points. We might not get six points, but we will see that hunger, we will see that desire. But, we, would, we would even give, we would even have more or less a little test for them but ahead to, but of that be, Chan game because be, right now, uh, Raymond, you agree with me that right now there's no uh, international window. Until at least for the home base, until that yeah. uh, December. But future. Toby, we've used the same chance. Nigeria has failed to qualify for Chan tournament using using the home base Eagles. So in a in a full international calendar, you think using the home base to uh, I mean to play those games is a justification? But look at this. Going into this those last two games yeah. that we played, the Super Eagles played, it was it was a sure bunker that we only needed one point. To confirm yeah, qualification. And we got that. On and yes, we got that. But are you telling me that if it was the own base we used for those two games, mm. we would have that, lost that, would, that, that would, No, I'm not saying we would have even gotten six points. Are you saying we would not have gotten one point? We might not. Against Benin, we might not. Against Rwanda? We still might not. I Be, feel... See, I feel... I, the, uh, the quality of the players of the Super League, the foreign pools, yes. are bigger, yes. greater. They are bigger than, than the home base, I yes. agree. But I'm saying that, worst case scenario, the home base would have still gotten one point. And it would have also given us uh, uh, another viewpoint to see, okay, what they might do ahead of this game coming in the month of December. You, you, you know what I would disagree with you? I don't think there is anywhere in the world that uh, you want to select a team for a dead over game People still go with their first team. 
I agree with you, Raymond. But if you are looking at the bigger picture now, I'm talking about the chanting. Yeah, the, you see, the chanting has their game against Ghana. Yes. That is what they are selected for. They but, you know, but, but, you know, but you know the chant team at this period is a case of uh, two yeah, two games whereby if you yes. do, if, 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 if you do if, well if you do well you are going straight to the tournament of course but if you do not and you are out exactly but I, I was now thinking that okay I'm just you, you, was, you are trying to say you want them to you want the own base players to be more like, a, like, like yes exactly like 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 an I, audition like an audition before the uh, game and I don't think you can use sort a qualifier even though they are dead over but, but as an audition you can only if, i think we had uh, victor collins of Nassau united yeah uh, you can only pick and of course invite some players i don't think it's wise enough to call for three players and they are all on basic on basic but even uh, victor collins that was even called up to the national team what was his impact there the point i'm trying to make is that we have to i, I think at this point, we should start building our uh, well. Maybe in 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 the not too distant future, we, maybe we can get to that. Look at some countries like uh, even Senegal now. Look at some countries like Morocco. Look at what Morocco did in their in their of matches. Of course, yeah. there. It's gotten to a point where you you might not even be able to differentiate between uh, the Moroc the Moroccan home base players and even their foreign base pros. Uh, the, the, Sometimes I'm not saying you you might not. You, of course, you have some players like your Ash Ashraf Hakimi, whereby they, yes, they are icons in that team. They are, but, more, but Morocco will still call 22 players, 20 players that are foreign base. Yes, they an are. average team in Africa will still a, a big country will call most of their players will definitely be foreign post 20 at most. Well, this, this what happens on the, on the general level. Yes, it happens on the general level, but, 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 but I feel I feel that. One discussion that we must make or try to have is that we must also make these home base players believe that okay, yes, even if, even if you are playing in the league, yeah. you would have an ample chance, chance an ample opportunity uh, uh, to walk into the national team, and it will still help the league one way or the other. You, you, because you, because now look at um, I think uh, Jonathan Aluku now, yeah, that was with Sporting Lagos. It's gone. Uh, it's gone yes. to a division two in Austria. Good. He was one of the shining stars of yeah. Sporting Lagos, albeit in a woeful season where they were relegated. But with all of the goals that I pumped in, back at the at the back, of, apart from the economic reasons of leaving the country, playing abroad, earning in US dollars or maybe British pounds or euros. Now, some of them I feel that okay, I'm playing in the MPFL. It might not be easy for me to break into. Uh, the national yeah, team. I know. Maybe if I go outside, but you need to I still play go. for a relatively good side to have a chance. Maduka Okoye, when he was first called up to the I, national yeah. team, he was, I think he was playing in the second in or the third fourth, he was fourth, well, fourth he, division. He was in the fourth division, yeah. and he came into the MPFL. Now, was there can a second division, the NNL? Now, let us now digress to the NNL for the purpose of this discussion. I know we are talking about the MPFL. Can an N NNL goalkeeper? Now, just have a call up to the national team, not even saying you will start. So, uh, one of the things I believe that just maybe not to say, okay, give them a sense of belonging, but so I should let some of these players believe that well. So far, you are playing for any club in the MPFL, not just the home based Eagles now, but even the mainstream su super Eagles, because sometimes some names that they call them, I don't, I, I, I don't feel happy with them. So they call them the Super Eagles B team. And I ask myself, what's the meaning of the Super Eagles B team? <laughs> meaning that there's the A team, those are the main players. <laughs> so the B team is just the, uh, they, they are the spare tires. And we must not reduce our own base stars I, I, to I, that. I think I, 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 get the, I get the point you're coming from. It's just like saying, let's give the quota of the own base. Exactly. No, I, we must not reduce it to the quota. To the quarter but I, I am i am of the i am uh, yes it, it, and 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 for this to happen it must seem, it means that the manager must have balls to call up these players not and not i know you we, we now had the mode of uh of the late steven keshi that called up players from the m the then mpfl or the yeah. mpl then into the starting 11 we had fengo good day back then we had juan shaiwa back yeah. then we had uh got from the got from a lot of them exactly they were not just fringe players they were actually part of the mainstay of that yeah. team that won that so uh i feel that we could have built on that i think toby i think for me i think it's beyond 
giving a quota to the to the, to the basic goals. I think first is the development of the league. The best, see, the best legs in the MPFL at least is. That is because we made them believe that unless you are abroad, no, it's not because of that. But it's one of the major reasons. I think it's also because of the economy and the environment. Well, you are not wrong about I that. I mean, I've spoken with players who have played outside the MPFL before. And you need to hear confessions. They will tell you. I was, was it, was it, uh, uh, Enyimba's midfielder, Atake midfielder, uh, Atule. Mm. I once spoke with Atule and he said, you can't compare what is happening in North African countries to the MPFL. He said, it's a wide, it's wider part. That's somebody who have tasted Outside, you know, so beyond the, I think it's beyond the MPF, beyond the quota of the Super Eagles quota. I think it's more about the development of the league and the uh, and the viable environment. I think those two matters. Away from, so you can have a calf for a goose. You can have two calves. So the about was our ego in 2013. Yes. It's nowhere to be found. Most of the guys, the Ogude, the Obuabuna, after that, the tournament, you are nowhere to be found. It's not about just, you can call them and they show themselves, but there is more to the game than just the national team. I don't think the national team should be a reward for, of a good performance for every MPV players. I believe if, uh, you, know, you, 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 you know that thing that you are not looking at? MPV players, you are mentioning Jonathan and Luku, they will go. They will go to Europe, second division, to go and do trials. First team footballers in the LPFL. I think this is what we should be talking about. I don't think we should be talking about forcefully giving a quota to every player. I think there is more to a football career than that. Well, uh, the growth of the players, the growth of the league, the viable, uh, uh, the viable environment matters most to me because we're talking about building a career for players now. I'm talking about, like I said, there are many England players that have just World Cup. Two calves. You can have two calves, three calves, four calves, and that's it. But the beauty of it is, whether you are playing here, the beauty of it is, you went from the NPFL to Europe, and you are playing consistently. They will call you. They will say, "This guy was from Manchester United. This guy was from Everton Stars. This guy was from Chelsea Stars. This guy was from this." I think that's the that is success story for me. It is. I agree with you. But we've also had consistent players yes. within the league uh, that have not received John Unduka, those are some of the players. So did, that, okay, so they got, uh, got, 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 uh, got uh, an invite. We've got players. Kazim Muguleye. You see, the truth is, they are fantastic players. Exactly. Players. That they, they are fantastic players. Exactly. Players. That they have showed their worth season but in, then, season out. There is an upgrade to them for the foreign post. See, Undidi, uh, the, ma the tank, uh, what's his name now? Frank Oyeka. Oyeka, uh, Oyedika, who else? It will be Dele Bashiru. But I still feel, I still feel this. I don't still, think. I, I feel, I, I feel this, there are still perceptions. The truth is that, I will still make reference to 2013. Prior to, prior to the commencement of the AFCON, in South Africa 2013. Yeah. If we were to place a Sunday Umba, who is a fleet footed attacker, call him a winger sometimes, and an Ahmed Musa that was in that team, of course, people would, all, would rush yes. at Ahmed Musa. Of course. But fine, I understand that the national team should not be a reward system. Yes, I understand that. Yes, they must show that, uh, uh, that consistency. Yes, that consistency. But Sometimes, if you do not help them grow, or if you do not maybe lead them through that path, we they might not we might not be able to discover them, or they might not even discover themselves. Do you do you think that for an average MPF player, the national team is on their mind? I think so because uh, every footballer will tell you that the highest uh, point uh career wise for any footballer is to play for east or national team okay. even if you are playing for india or afghanistan but donning that uh jersey. jersey you cannot more or less that's the reason why some people will tell you if they just have one car they'll tell you they're an ex-international mm, and I get yes, that. they can go anywhere and say yes i have represented my country before 
Uh, look at the likes of, um, I think 2013, yes, when we won the Af AFCON then. There was the likes, I think Chigo Ziadim was on the bench as one of the goalkeepers, if my memory serves me right. We had uh, uh, this uh, goalkeeper that played in Israel for several years too, and we was deputizing uh, uh, um, in Yama too. Uh, Ayinuba. Yes, Ayinuba. So, fine, they might not have played hard minutes in that tournament, but yes, they will tell you that yes, they are ex internationals. So, sometimes, uh, yes, the, that economic benefit is there, yes. Traveling, we, some of them will even travel to Vietnam, they will travel to Sudan, I'm telling you, they will go to Afghanistan. That is what I want. That, yes, that, that's, I, know, I know that too, that, that we always, we're, we're all economic animals, we always want to move to yeah, greener pastures. I, I, I understand that, but for some of those players that have shown their craft in the league, season in, season out, there's nothing wrong with give them caps. Not just inviting them, giving them active caps, that maybe one or two caps. Let us see them dazzle. Uh, look at uh, this player uh, that played for the Super Eagles at, at, at some point, that later went to, I think, Esperance in Tunisia. Uh -oh. uh, he was a winger. I remember he was called off from the MPFL. That's um, the former Eva player. Uh, what's his name now? Uh, it's not skip my brain. It, it's also skip my brain too. But I remember he played for one Super Eagles game. He just he, yeah. He had uh, he had the opportunity to just come into that particular match. He played a corner kick, and the Super Eagles scored a goal from there. And I remember he was give, he, he had some call ups after some time. He left the MPFL, went to Esperance, and that was all. Like, we've not seen him play for the Super Eagles ever since. So I feel that we should also help with some of these players grow. Not saying the national team should be a dumping ground or an avenue uh, to yeah, more. Anna yes. Wala. yes, Anna Yawala, yes, thank you very much. That's the name I wanted to remember. So, there are some of these players that, yes, we must help them too. I understand you. So, we'll get to a point whereby we will not need to be quoting the uh, amount of MPFL players, but at this point, this league is our own. Mm. We have to help it grow. Mm. So, that is what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we have to encourage some of these players. I understand your 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 point, very valid. And the reason why I'm also hammering on this is that we have missed out on back to back qualifications for the Chan. It will be disastrous if we do not. And knowing the mood of the national team based on how we finished uh, this uh, yeah, after qualifiers. this this after qualifiers, if it was the, uh, the 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 home base players that had some results. We will say yes, there's avenue to grow. to grow. But even with our A-based team, now look at what we got. But uh, time will tell. <laughs> well, I digress, but then uh -huh. it's part of, part of the discussion. Um, talking about um, according to NPV players, helping them to grow, and so many much more. We'll go straight to our prediction game. And of course, a quick one to see. But before we go into the prediction game, Toby, first thing first. How many away wins are you seeing? How many draws? And how many home wins are we looking at? Oh, well. Uh, I will be calling a... I'll be calling two away victories. Two away victories, you are having nine fixtures. How many draws? I think there will be no draws. Mm. Two away victories, seven wins. Seven home wins. Or more. Okay. Uh, starting with the away victories. Wait, I know. Uh, we'll take a one at the time. Mm. On Saturday, I think there are four games according to what I have here. Yeah. I can remember what else. Aqua United, Nayat Nado, Sikoju City, uh, Bendel, Kwa United, Lubi Stars, Kwa Pilas. First, I can remember what else. I can remember what else. Aqua United. I can remember as uh, Aqua United. I think uh, I can remember as we get all three points right in, in a degree. So I'm like, banking them to get all three points there. Yeah. Scoreline. Scoreline won't go to nil. Go nil. And they did their last game, I guess so. Niger Tornados against High Flying Oga Boys. Yes. Uh, Iko Du City. High Flying Oga Boys. And I think uh, Iko Du City will get all three points. Yeah, traveling away to me now, they'll get all three ah, points. Ah, what confidence is this? Eh, baby no, ah. I think I think they've they've broken they've broken that cycle of uh, trying and to. Those have been one of the best teams this season. Yes, no doubt about that. And uh, for Ecuador, I think they are one of the hottest teams in the league, right? Yeah, the based, second most informed team. Yes, uh, based on form and all. So I think uh, 
with what they've had so far. Remember, they traveled to Katina. Yeah. They got all three points on the road. And funny indeed, you go, they are eight, nine, 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 nine. So, I think... Uh, but both are uh, on 17, 17 points. So, Ikorodu City, all three points are bringing it down to Ikorodu, all the way from Mina. Wow. Tipping on that, boys. To go straight to Mina. Tornadoes has not lost at home this season. They've had a couple of draws. They've won two games at home. But Toby is saying, Ikorodu City will go. To me, a big point. A willow. I want to win. A will win. Yeah. And that will four games on the win, on the bounce. If they do that, yes, that would be actually interesting. Mm. Bendel Insurance Square United. Uh, Bendel Insurance versus Square United. I think Bendel will get all three points. It has been talked to us before. Our Sunshine Stars are lately. Bendel Square, uh, not Sunshine Stars. Oh, Bender. Uh, well, yeah, Bendel Square. You got uh, Bendel Square. Yeah. So I think uh, Bendel will get all three points. I think uh, nothing should stop. Them from more or less retaining all three points at the summer look at the stadium. So I've uh, been there a lot of three points at home right there. Scoreline. Scoreline two goals to one. You didn't give me the scoreline for uh, Tornado to go to City. Uh for Tornadoes, I think uh they will lose at home. Yeah, I said that uh, two goals to one uh Cody City will win right there in Mina. Hmm, everywhere we scout uh, Low B stars canopilas last game on Saturday. Yes, uh low B stars versus canopilas. I think uh canopilas uh, will get another away victory on the way for them. So Yes, that is the second uh, we victory of the Colina uh, in this uh, weekend the MPF game. Uh, wow, a jam on down so uh packaging they look good. They go collect for game manager. Uh so you mean they can be as we go to Lafia and deal with Lobby Stars. Impossible is nothing. That's what they need in the day, say. And you want to get up your sleep as a manager. Exactly. Score line. Score line three one. Ah, one, two, three. What about you, Munge Kereo? I make Musa will be one of the goal scorers. Again? Yes. Sunday games. Katina United against Remo Stars. Katina versus Remo Stars. Katina getting that victory. Scoreline? Scoreline, one goal to nil. One nil. The waveform of Remo Stars wants to deep again. I've been deep. You've got to deep, you see. Play two United and Sarah United. Play two get all three points. Two goes to one. Two goes to one. One. Rivers United against Abia Warriors. Yes. Uh, the I think the Rivers will swarm over uh, the Warriors from Abia State. Uh, three nil. Hmm. What a way to come back to victory. One, two, three. If you really join, let's say you go beat Abia Warriors. Imam Alpha, you go extend the Rivers United winless streak. Or. Uh, the rivers will just sweep you and your warriors. I said to you know the well, I don't know. And the game I'm actually looking forward to this week. The most informed team against the developing champion, Heartland, against Enugu Rangers. We need to give, I wish I have a bell, but I will use my hand. See, if you are doing well, I will tell you. When you are doing badly, everybody will shade you. Even me. But now you are doing well. But I win again. Four games, three wins, and one draw. Scoring six goals in the process and considering two. Again. You are finally understood the league. You said, like, you. Ah. Well, I think number 10 on the log. Remember, at some point, they were 20th. And for, of course. No, that's sweet. Now they are hosting any good Rangers. Yes, they are hosting any good Rangers. So I think uh, for uh, Emmanuel Amonike, well, wonderful manager. I also like his style of uh, coaching. I think I think uh, he should still be able to hold his own. It will be hard fought uh, because uh, for Enugu Rangers, they would also come. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's an oriental derby. Yeah, sure. So uh, he has a whole lot of uh, 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 clashing of egos. It's interesting to see how uh, two diminutive uh, managers will be on the touchline. Fidel is a in his uh, black suit and even a uh, I might have not money here either, but I think uh, uh, Atlanta will edge it one goal to nil. One goal to nil, and the last game of the week, shooting stars against by Osa United. They are condemned to get all three points. There's no, <laughs> even, there's, there's no, there's no shortcut to to the pocket. Mm. You just have to get it for Benga or Gumbote. He has to show that yes, the reason why they call him Oracle is not for. It's not for chance. That but fucking, that fucking. Exactly. So, and uh, for, uh, for, for, for all that shooting stars they've gone through, I think it has been an underwhelming season so far. 
they, they went to this this season with a lot of promise the fans and uh, so far it has not been encouraging well mm. the extra of players uh as the, the team has not been able to balance so far injuries to have not also done their world a whole lot of good but i think they should get that victory against the uh, uh, Bayosa United. I don't know if I can call it a multi score line because goal scoring too can also be. And but the last home game that they played, three, nil. three goals to nil, uh, uh, they got uh, that, that result right there. But I think uh, two goals to nil will be a decent score line against Bayosa United. Two goals to nothing, a decent score line against Bayosa United. Those are two big score line. Nine games, two away wins. I've got seven home wins right there for March Day 13. And just to let you know that March the 14th, according to what I have with me, be coming up midweek. March the 14th, we're coming up Wednesday, uh, maybe Wednesday to and Thursday, or maybe Tuesday to Thursday uh, left. But that is what I have before me. It could change depending on what uh, the league body thinks. Another implication once again, nine games, two away wins, and seven home wins. Hmm. And one of the away wins, according to Toby Zikodu, beating Ayatonarios 2 1. And of course, Cardo Pillars beating Obi Stars. Three goes to one. Will this happen? You have the chance to also drop your own prediction and let's see how many Toby will get. And let's see how many you also get. And of course, our prediction game resumes this week and the beginning out, it will be 5,000. But then don't forget, you get to get all this information. Where you follow us on all our Twitter handles, on all our social media handles, and we'll give you. It will be a lovely weekend. I'm looking forward to those games, just like you also are looking forward to that game. Toby, the biggest shock this weekend will be. What? You. <laughs> the biggest shock this weekend yeah. will be. Well, the biggest shock uh, will be shooting stars losing at all. To Bayelsa United. To Bayelsa United. And uh, I and I do not want to imagine that. I don't even want to imagine that. Voila, voila, voila. You know how you battle fans can be. Voila, my seller. Voila, my seller. Let me take it if you battle so. Voila, my seller. Voila, voila, voila. Bayelsa beat you this time. Never done. On your Sunday. That's why I could make one more. Well, like I always claim for, I'm looking forward to shocks. I remember I love shocks. All the shocks. I'm looking forward to seeing Abia Warriors beating Rivers United in Polar Court. And um, Aqua United beating the Kalim Warriors in Maduguri. And of course, it will also be a shock if Bayelsa United beat Shooting Stars in Ibano. Imagine those things happened in box office content. Just so that Monday or Monday, we'll come for the next podcast. I'm at Begede. I'm at Bino. That's the side of the package for March Day 13 preview. Of course, games coming this weekend. <clears throat> I am the sports illuminator, and of course, I am to be able to do justice to all these matches. Don't forget, once again, follow us on our social media and lose. Subscribe on all on our YouTube. And of course, let's have a comment. By the time you come back next week, Monday, box office content is what I'm looking forward to. Whatever I need power. Goodbye. God bless you and support the NPFL. Bye for now.